Google's new Imagine Photorealistic Text-to-Image Diffusion model outperforms OpenAI's DALL-A2 and also demonstrates deep language understanding. Imagine builds on the power of large transformer language models in understanding text and hinges on the strength of diffusion models in high-fidelity image generation. The key discovery is that generic large language models pre-trained on text-only corpora are surprisingly effective at encoding text for image synthesis. Increasing the size of the language model in Imagine boosts both sample fidelity and image text alignment much more than increasing the size of the image diffusion model. Imagine achieves a new state-of-the-art FID score of 7.27 on the COCO dataset without ever training on COCO, and human raters find Imagine samples to be on par with the COCO data itself in image text alignment. To assess text-to-image models in greater depth, a comprehensive and challenging benchmark is introduced for text-to-image models called DrawBench. With DrawBench, Imagine is compared with recent methods including VQ, GAN plus CLIP, latent diffusion models, Glide and DALL-A2, and found that human raters preferred Imagine over other models in side-by-side -side comparisons, both in terms of sample quality and image text alignment. Imagine is the latest in an image-generating arms race going on between AI companies following OpenAI, which last month revealed DALL-A2, and began providing limited access to the public for testing. According to an accompanying research paper about Imagine, Google's AI is simpler to train and its image's resolution can be scaled up easier than its competitor. In some cases, Imagine also demonstrates a greater understanding of detail than DALL-A 2, especially when building from prompts that include embedded text. The AI world is still figuring out how to deal with the amazing show of prowess that is DALL-A 2's ability to draw, paint, and imagine just about anything. But OpenAI isn't the only one working on something like that. The way Google's Imagine works is to start by generating a small 64 by 64 pixel image, and then do two super resolution passes on it to bring it up to 1024 by 1024. This isn't like normal upscaling though, as AI super resolution creates new details in harmony with the smaller image, using the original as a basis. Say for instance you have a dog on a bike, and the dog's eye is 3 pixels across in the first image, but on the second image it would be 12 pixels across. Because the AI knows what a dog's eye looks like, it generates more and more detail as it draws. This then happens again, and it becomes 48 pixels across, and so on. The advances Google's researchers claim with Imagine are several. They say that existing text models can be used for the text encoding portion, and that their quality is more important than simply increasing visual fidelity. In the paper describing Imagine, researchers compare results for it to DALL-A 2 doing a panda making latte art. In all of DALL-A 2's images, it's latte art of a panda, but in most of Imagine's images, it's a panda making the art. In Google's tests, Imagine came out ahead in tests of human evaluation, both on accuracy and fidelity. In an insightful section on the Imagine site describing limitations and societal impact, the researchers wrote, Downstream applications of text-to-image models are varied and may impact society in complex ways. The potential risks of misuse raise concerns regarding responsible open sourcing of code and demos. At this time, we have decided not to release code or a public demo. Neuromorphic memory device simulates neurons and synapses. Simultaneous emulations of neuronal and synaptic properties promote the development of brain-like artificial intelligence. Researchers have reported a nano-sized neuromorphic memory device that emulates neurons and synapses simultaneously in a unit cell, which represents another step towards completing the goal of neuromorphic computing designed to rigorously mimic the human brain with semiconductor devices. Inspired by the cognitive functions of the human brain that current computers cannot provide, neuromorphic devices have been widely investigated. However, current complementary metal oxide semiconductor-based neuromorphic circuits simply connect artificial neurons and synapses without synergistic interactions, and the concomitant implementation of neurons and synapses still remain a challenge. To address these issues, a research team from the Department of Material Science and Engineering implemented the biological working mechanisms of humans by introducing the neuron-synapse interactions in a single memory cell rather than the conventional approach of electrically connecting artificial neuronal and synaptic devices. In addition, the developed neuromorphic device can replace complex CMOS neuron circuits with a single device, providing high scalability and cost efficiency. The human brain consists of a complex network of 100 billion neurons and 100 trillion synapses. The functions and structures of neurons and synapses can flexibly change according to the external stimuli, adapting to the surrounding environment. The research team developed a neuromorphic device which, in short-term and long-term memories, coexist using volatile and non-volatile memory devices that mimic the characteristics of neurons and synapses.
A threshold device is used as volatile memory and phase change memory is used as a non-volatile device. Two thin film devices are integrated without intermediate electrodes, implementing the functional adaptability of neurons and synapses in the neuromorphic memory. The developed neuromorphic memory device also mimics the retaining effect that allows quick learning of the forgotten information by implementing a positive feedback effect between neurons and synapses. Artificial intelligence device may help diagnose children's autism New research has found that an artificial intelligence-based medical device can assist clinicians in primary care settings to accurately diagnose autism spectrum disorder in children up to six years old. The study, published in NPJ Digital Medicine earlier this month, notes that autism spectrum disorder can reliably be diagnosed as early as 18 months. Autism spectrum disorder is also one of the most common developmental disorders among children, and early intervention has been shown to improve long-term outcomes. The tool, an AI-based software as a medical device, or SAMD, offers recommendations for the primary care provider after analyzing behavioral features from a caregiver questionnaire, a healthcare provider questionnaire, and two short home videos. The tool bases its recommendations on a machine learning algorithm that selects behavioral features predictive of ASD. The algorithm was developed and validated using patient record data from children with diverse presentations, conditions, and comorbidities who were either diagnosed with ASD or confirmed not to have it using standard diagnostic tools. To test the tool's accuracy, the researchers conducted a double-blinded study in which 711 participants were enrolled. The tool classified patients as ASD positive, ASD negative, or intermediate, which indicates that the information input was insufficient for the algorithm to render a highly predictive output. The tool provided a classification of ASD positive or ASD negative for 31.8% of the study participants. Of the participants who received an ASD diagnosis by a specialist, 52.5 received a determinate result from the tool. These were all correctly classified by the device except for one false negative. Of those who received an ASD negative and neurotypical diagnosis by the specialist, 35% received an ASD negative result by the tool, and none were misclassified as ASD positive. There were no detected tool performance differences across participants, race, ethnicity, gender, education level, or income. These findings indicate that AI-based diagnostic aids may have significant potential to assist clinicians in primary care settings with ASD diagnosis. However, the researchers state that the study will need to be replicated and other studies evaluating other devices are required before these tools can be effectively implemented in clinical settings.